Hi everyone, my name is Tanisha and this is my video for an academy stars program. So in this video, I will be discussing about recombinant DNA technology. So I will write my topic over here. It is recombinant DNA technology. And specifically, we will be talking about the tools of recombinant DNA technology. Now, we also called recombinant DNA technology as RDT, right? So, we also call it RDT. Now, to understand this, we will take a very basic example, okay? So, let's take my example. So, uh, let's say this is me, okay? And let's say I am hungry and I want to eat something. Let's say I want to eat kheer, okay? Whereas, I don't know how to cook, okay? Whereas, this is a friend of mine and he knows how to cook he is let's say chef okay so he has a recipe for everything he has a recipe for kheer as well so he has the uh, recipe for kheer so if i want to cook kheer and if i take this recipe from him so i'm taking this recipe would i be able to make kheer myself I would be able to write so I have taken the recipe now and I am making kheer for myself okay so same way RDT functions as well let's take a real example now so let's take example of this bacterium this bacterium it has the DNA and it has this gene which is coding for an antibiotic okay so this is coding for an antibiotic and I need this antibiotic, okay? Let's say for medicinal purposes. And for this, will I require to produce this on a large scale? I will, right? So I have to produce this on a very large scale. So for this, what I can do is, if I take this particular gene, which is coding for this antibiotic, and insert this into a host uh, which is easy to grow let's say e coli so i am inserting this particular gene only in my e coli so my e coli has this gene now and if it i replicate this gene inside e coli and produce this e coli on a very large scale will this e coli be producing the same antibiotic now it will be right so this e coli of mine is producing the same antibiotic that i needed okay so this is the entire process of rdt here this gene that we discussed what is it functioning like it is functioning like this recipe that i was talking about and this e coli it is functioning like me which has taken the recipe from this bacterium and is now producing the required antibiotic so this is the process of rdt and it requires certain tools okay so we will be talking about those tools now so first of all i would require i said i would be cutting this gene out so i am cutting this gene particular out will i be requiring something like uh, this yes i would require scissors but molecular scissors so i would require a scissor which is so i will write it over here so the scissor molecular scissor is restriction enzyme restriction enzyme would be functioning as a molecular scissor now i was talking about that i have to transfer this into this e coli so i would require a molecular vehicle right so i couldn't bring a vehicle but remember that i would need a molecular vehicle vehicle transports one thing from uh, this place to another place right so to transfer to e coli i would require a molecular vehicle and our vectors functions as molecular vehicles now i have to paste i have cut this gene out and i have to paste this gene on my vector will i require something like this right so i will require a molecular glue now 
we know what is our molecular glue so our molecular glue is a very well known dna ligase now our dna ligase would be functioning as molecular glue now lastly i would require a host a competent host where i can produce this particular antibiotic on a large scale so which would be our e coli which was me in that case so we would require a host as well so these are all the tools that i will be requiring to conduct the process of rdt and i will talk a little about each one of them now okay so let's talk about our restriction enzymes first of all so i have my restriction enzymes as i already talked these are scissors that means they would cut so they are of two types first of all they are exonucleases so we have exonuclease and secondly we also have endo nucleus now what does this exo sound like uh, it would be related to something external right so if this is my dna and i add this exo nucleus to this medium it would just cut at the external position that is terminals this terminal and this another terminal so it would cut the terminal base pairs only whereas on the other hand our endo nucleus let's say this is my dna again it would cut anywhere in the middle it can cut anywhere on the entire dna but it should have certain sequences which are our recognition sequences so it would require our recognition sequences it will basically recognize those sequences and it would cut on those uh, uh, sequences only nowhere else the cut can be made so these were our restriction enzymes and let's talk about the next one which is our vector okay so let's talk about vector a little bit so i will take a vector so let's take this is my vector okay so there are many vectors present um, if i have to give you an example p b r 3 2 2 is a very well known vector now on the other hand we would have our gene okay so i have my gene so this is the entire genome of any organism let's take that bacterium and on this this particular gene only is the coding for that product let's take the antibiotic that i need so what should be there is that both of these should have the same recognition sequence this vector as well as this gene of interest both should have the same recognition sequence so i can add the same restriction enzyme in both of them and both can and um, produce the same type of ends so i would add this restriction enzyme in both the things and they will be cut so uh, i have extracted my gene out so this was the only part which i required and i have also made a cut so let's say over here on my vector so next what we have next we have our glue which is the dna ligase so what would happen is we will take our gene and we will paste it over here on our vector with the help of glue that is dna ligase and at the end what we got we got our recombination recombinant dna so this is our recombinant dna which contains our gene of interest and this is the vector which is carrying it now for the last one which is our host let's take the example of e coli so e coli is our host and to make it competent we have to treat it with certain of factors uh, such as uh, we have to treat with divalent cation because it cannot take this uh, dna as it is so we treat it with certain divalent cations we give it heat shock then we put it on ice so what it does it creates some pores on the membrane our recombinant dna enters through these pores and then ice seals those pores so inside our e coli now i have my recombinant dna 
now this E. coli would produce the required antibiotic. So this E. coli is now producing my antibiotic. So this was the entire process of recombinant DNA technology. Uh, we studied about restriction enzymes, which were the scissors, they made the cut vectors which were the vehicles which transported the gene we studied about dna lysis which was the glue it stick the two gene and vector together and host in which we transported our gene and it produced our required product so these were uh, all the tools and next we have the applications of uh, recombinant dna technology which we can study in the next session right so this was it for this particular session i will see you in the next one and thank you so much